it on or you got to get everybody on your back when it look like you've been down. Like you said, mentally. You got everybody route, I mean, ready to go into war and follow me. And like you say, you might not be a leader. And then, you know, he's the one everybody's watching or getting attention. And then you sign the ball to the other person who's got to take that shot or, you know, make that pass or get that rebound. So, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But I thought he had at least a decent IQ because he's getting rebound steals. And he he, like he has. I'm, I'm not. That, let's go on record. I'm not saying he's a dummy at all. But your I, natural intelligence tends to show in pressure situations. You get what I'm saying? Natural intelligence always shows in pressure situations. Think about pressure situations you didn't been in. And yo. Quick thinking and your quick instincts then kicked in and you didn't get out that tight squeeze. You get what I'm saying? I think LeBron thinks too much. You get what I'm saying? I think he thinks about the game entirely a little bit too much. I think he think I don't think he think about the game. I think he think about the outside sources. That's all in his ear, saying that he can't do this and he's this and he's that and he's this and he's inherited this throughout his life. You get what I'm saying? His motivation, really. Yeah, he should be using his motivation, but he uses it as his handicap. That's his kryptonite. And I think that has, like, fucked with him a little bit when it comes to the mental part of the game. You get what I'm saying? I can make all type of excuses for him and everything. I can say all type of things, this and that, but it's, it's on record. He lacks a certain part of the mental game when it comes to basketball. I'm not going to lie to you, and... I go to war with anybody, whoever it is, any big time name or whatever, and LeBron James can sit in front of my face and we can talk about it. Just like them people sit back and dissect them videos of him, I can I sit back and dissect the same videos. It's just that I'm not getting paid to tell your ass this, homie. Not yet. <laughs> not, not yet. yet. <laughs> I add on to that. And I think you're missing that because he didn't have that right coach. That right coach who can guide him and direct him and give him that insight, give him that knowledge. I mean, look in the history of all the coaches he's had, even Eric Spolster. I mean, Spolster is good, but Pat Riley, Popovich, Phil Jackson, even Rudy Tom Jonovich, he's not in the class of them. And those are guys who get those uh, boys, especially his leaders, and get them to understand mentally, physically, even spiritually on the basketball court what you got to do and what kind of ability to lead the team to get to that promised land. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. This is Bring Your A Game Sports Talk Radio. Me and the homie Dante, we sitting up here. We talking about the NBA Finals. We talking LeBron. We talking now. We just talking, just sit back and kicking it and doing what we do. You dig? Got some good music coming up for y'all, man. We got some more talks and everything else. You know, who t- who knows how far we going to go with the show? Got some stuff coming up for y'all, man. It's a doggy dog world. Y'all good people be smooth, man. Be backing y'all in a minute. Seven up. I never have. I never will. I tell a bitch like this. Bitch, can we get a motherfucking moment of silence for for this small chronic break? the whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Niggas be brown nosing these hoes and shit. Taking bitches out to eat and spending money on these hoes. You know what I'm saying? I treat a bitch like seven up. I never have. I never will. I tell a bitch like this. Bitch. You without me is like hell, Melvin without the blue note. She'll never go platinum. Hey, Daz, give me a light, nigga. We'd like to welcome y'all to the fabulous Carolina West. I own this motherfucker. I, my name is Tata. Y'all niggas know who I am. Y'all niggas tan up shit. But we got something old and something new for y'all tonight. Put your hand together for Stoop Doggy Dog, the dog pound, and the family dramatic. It's like everywhere I look and everywhere I go, I'm hearing motherfuckers trying to steal my flow. But it ain't no bank, I see my nigga Julio put me up on the game when I step through the door. You know, some of these niggas is so deceptive, using my styles like a contraceptive. I hope you get burnt, seems you haven't learnt. It's the knick-knack patty whack. I still got the biggest sack, so put your gun away, run away, cause I'm back. Wow. Hit him up, get him up, split him up now. Yeah. 
tell me what's going on it make me wanna holler cause my dollars come in ozones known for the break up so take off your clothes and quit trying to spit at my motherfucking hoes speaking of hoes i get to the point you think you got the bomb cause i rolled you a joint use a flea and I'm the big dog. I scratch you off my balls with my motherfucking paws. Y'all niggas better recognize and see where I'm coming from. And still eat side till I die. Why X Y? As the world keeps spinning to the D O double C Y. If you give me ten bitches, then I'll fuck all ten. See my homie Snoop Dogg sipping juice and gin. Don't slip. I'm for the set trip to get paid. But styles vary. Packing flavor like lifesavers. Ain't that something? Talk shit and I'm dumping. I had your whole fucking block bumping. Don't sweat, but check the technique. I'm unique like China. You never find a bomb or rama than a snigger behind you. So peekaboo, clear the way. I'm coming through. One, two, three. You can't see me. I'm a G like that strap with hit hard tactics. I fucking menace using hoes like Tennis racket, it's on again, it's on and popping. All I see is green, so there ain't no stopping. I wanna see some panties dropping. I'm coming from LA. She used to chill with Dre up in Compton. All I have to do is use that hoe. Chill out my dick, easy, but you take that clothes. I'm dishing out blues, I'm upsetting like bad news. Cut off khakis, French braids, and house shoes. Corrupt, the name so I'm also catching slugs. And I smoke weed for the fuck of it. Rough and rugged shit. It's unexplanatory how I get wicked, but it's mandatory. Be that I kick it, check it. I'm running hoes in '94. No must approve it, hoes. Barbie sugar, rip it away. I be sticking and moving. Prepare for a whoa, whoa, it's on. I'm head hunting. Hit the button to light shit up like red dome. Peep the massacre from a verbal assassin. Murdering with rhymes, packing tech nines for some action. You really don't know, do you? You fucking with a hog, you can't do me. I'm going out loony like oak dog. <laughs> The dog pair rocks the party all night long. Uh-huh. Till we end. The early it don't stop and, and uh, it don't quit for uh, us. The dog pound click to drop the cabbie dog shit. Get your ass out of the motherfucking cup. One smoke, so grab a seat and grab your gin and juice and check out the flip. I flip flop and serve hoes with the fat dick till I die. I'm still screaming that. Bitches ain't shit. Now I'm the Mac Dad hat. Not known about the city where I'm from. Dumb diddy dumb as your groove to the gangster shit. The D O double G, the P O U and D, the gangster click. Now as the pound break it down with the gangster phone. I can see and I can tell us what the fuck you want. So I uh, legs up the chronic so I can get high. I promise I'll smoke chronic till the day that I die. It's a dumb, it's a dumb, it's a dumb. It's a dumb, it's a dumb. Black Hippie Radio Entertainment Sports Talk Radio. That was Snoop Dogg, Doggy World. I'm trying to get Dante some of his West Coast. And everything else, you know. He like to keep it gutter. Um, what was uh, what was coming back on to talk about this time around? What was coming back on? Well, I mean, what? Thursday, is it the draft? Yeah, yeah, Thursday draft. I think I think so. I think so. We're gonna we're gonna look more into that. You got number one, Ben Simmons. I don't know. I you know what the draft I really don't pay attention to neither, man. Wow. I didn't man, I thought you got down with that too. Nah, man. It's me, me, I just I just want to see the players on the court. Yeah, but like you said, the system and everybody projected him going first and he's supposed to be going over there to Philadelphia. 
And I don't know what the hell they doing over there. Listen here, Philadelphia don't have a system. Philadelphia has a buffet for teams to go pick players to add in order because Philadelphia has some good players over there. We do got some players over there that can be added into other teams, man. I think they about to get uh, – that's about to change, though, because uh, I can't remember the name off top, but he – oh, uh, I think his name is Angelo something. He's the one who has all the uh, Olympics. He's got that all set up, you know. Um, he's got that organized. Jerry Galangelo, yeah. I think he took over as GM or president of operations over there in Philadelphia. Ah, for real? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, yeah, that's a, that. D'Angelo, if I'm saying his name wrong, I think it's D'Angelo or, or D'Angelo or something like that. He was a part of the Olympics, right? Yeah. yeah okay, they departed of how to putting the whole team together and all that. Oh, yeah. Very intelligent dude. Very intelligent dude. So, hey, let's see if they can turn it around, man. Hey, for real. But uh, we was talking... Um, off the air, we was talking about the whole Jimmy Butler situation. You know, about him possibly can be traded. Noah being traded and also Rose being traded and everything else. We're going to talk about those subjects and those topics. But first, we're going to hit on Jimmy. And the first thing that comes about, you already know, over in Minnesota. I don't see you him know. going to Minnesota, man. I mean, well, you know, Thibs is up there now. And Thibs got total control of a lot of shit now, man. No, no. On the end, yeah. On the Bulls end. And they want Wiggins. And they're like, they're not giving up Butler for nothing but Wiggins and added pieces. Which is smart on their part, because, I mean. And draft picks. Well, they're trying to give up the number one, number five draft pick. And the Bulls want Wiggins and number five, if that's the way it's going to go down. I think Butler worth more than that, to be honest. But in the long run, the Bulls are going to benefit because you're getting a very raw. Let's, I'm going record. I'm a Wiggins fan. I'm a very big Wiggins fan. Been following him ever since he was in Canada. You know, on his way and making his tour to Kansas on to the NBA. I've been I've been following Wiggins. I think Cleveland should have kept Wiggins, but that's a whole other story right now. We on this. But um, I, I would take Wiggins in Chicago. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, the thing I'm saying, too, is I would, too. But I don't think Minnesota is going to depart with him. I don't think Tibbs. Tibbs is too intelligent. But he, but he's getting Jimmy though. He's getting a, a he's getting a more well polished Jimmy after he left. Yeah, that's true. But then you just say he's getting a Jimmy that can lead a team and get them in the playoffs and possibly start contending because you know the defense is going there, and that's all he needs is that one defensive person to make his defense work. And that you know he always wanted his shooting guards to be the best defenders. You know, he always wanted that. Well let's yeah. see who we got up there. Okay, you got Wiggins, Towns. I don't even know who they starting five is. You got Towns, you got the light skinned uh cat, what's his name? Uh Levine. Yeah. Uh you got Rubio. Uh and I mean that's basically in a nutshell. Oh, I think the big head dude over there, what's his name? Pekovic. If, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I think the big head is the, the, the center, Pekovic. And Pekovic can give you like 15 and 10 a night. So you're telling me Tibbs rather have Jimmy over there till the guy you say is going to be the star of the league pretty soon? Yeah. And I think you're going to have more than that to deal with that West like that. Well, I mean, of course, you would. I don't think, to be honest with you, I don't think uh, you would stop with Jimmy. You'll have to add more pieces. I'm quite sure they're not just going to say, okay, we got rid of Wiggins and now we're ready to get over the hump. No. I'm quite sure once Jimmy once Jimmy come in, they're going to try to work out to get something with Noah, too. You already know. No, Noah is already a free agent, so he can sign him freely if he wants to, if Noah wants to go up there. Well, the Bulls already said that they're going to make an effort to sign Noah back anyway. Yeah, but does he want to come back? That's the thing, too. He was saying he wanted to come back. Then he was saying, he, no, Noah, Noah right now, he, I think Noah just in his feelings about everything. I, to be honest, I don't think this Bulls team going to break up, period. But if it was to happen, I would say give me uh, the, um, what's this right here, two more months, and I'm going to need those phones back. <laughs> Just got a little side, just got a little side joke going on out here. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I don't think this Bulls team go break up, man. I think it's all just speculation talking. We just entertaining it right now. But 
I think we're going to come in and see the the five back intact, you know, with Taj at the four. I think Gasol on his way. Or Gasol already gone. I already, you know, when he made his little comments, I just said, fuck Gasol. I ain't even reading, looking to him no more. Yeah.